Hi everyone, my name is Jenny Katzingson. I serve as the Associate Director of Recruitment and Admissions at the University of Arizona Honors College. Thank you for joining me in this virtual information session. At the Honors College, we serve about 4,000 students among the 35,000 undergraduate students at Arizona. When you're in honors, you're essentially a dual citizen. So you're a member of your home academic college, such as the College of Engineering or the College of Humanities, and you're also a member of the Honors College, where you'll have a close-knit community of scholars. Our students are still fully integrated into the rest of campus, which is just over one square mile. For example, there are over 600 clubs and organizations you can be a part of, and we have honor students involved in many of those. About 14% of honor students are members of Greek life. We have between 40 to 50 NCAA athletes in the Honors College. There are honor students in the Pride of Arizona, which is our marching band. We have students who hold on-campus jobs, participate in internships, members who serve in student government. So it's great to see that our students still have that large traditional public school university feel, all while having a smaller community through the Honors College where they receive special benefits. In terms of major, honor students can apply for any degree program at Arizona. This is an illustration of our breakdown by our freshman fall 2019 class. You'll notice many of our students tend to be in STEM fields, and the four most popular colleges are the College of Science, College of Engineering, the Eller College of Management, which is our business school, as well as the College of Social and Behavioral Sciences, known as the People's College. About one in five honor students pursues a double major or a dual degree. For example, one of my students this year is majoring in biomedical engineering and music performance, where she's also studying the flute. I have a former student, Alex, who majored in economics, astronomy, and physics. So you can choose any degree program. You can even apply as no major if you're not quite sure what you want to study yet. If you did apply for fall 2020 as no major, you would be assigned to one of our academic advisors who serves this population. One reason why many of our students pursue double majors or dual degrees is because they're graduating from high school with advanced placement credit, international baccalaureate credit, or dual enrollment credit. A helpful website is catalog.arizona.edu. On this website, you can search advanced placement or international baccalaureate to look up AP and IB exams, the scores you need, how many credits you'll earn from those scores, and what those credits transfer over as. If you've done community college classes in Arizona, another helpful website is aztransfer.com. This website will show you how your courses will transfer at the University of Arizona, Northern Arizona University, as well as Arizona State University. Now keep in mind, students change their majors. So if you come in to the University of Arizona with a degree program in mind, you might learn that there's another major that's better suited for you, and that's totally okay to change your major. You'll want to make sure you meet with your academic advisor and your degree program, as well as your honors advisor. In terms of academics, the Honors College offers smaller classes. Our average class size is about 19 students. You are interacting with Arizona's best faculty. For example, deans, department heads, regents professors, and university distinguished faculty teach honors courses. In an honors course, you're also surrounded by other honors students. So right now, if you're in high school and you're taking honors and AP classes, and you like being surrounded by other students who are motivated, bright, and hardworking, then the honors college is going to be a great fit for you. Most of our students take about one to two honors classes per semester. So you're not just taking all honors classes when you're here. It's kind of similar to high school where you get to choose between honors and AP and standard courses. So when you're at Arizona, you might be choosing between an honors English class versus a standard English class or honors general chemistry or standard general chemistry. We also have our own general education courses as well as electives. There are over 250 honors classes that you can choose from. Some examples that I've seen in the past include classes like the science of baseball, the economics of love, the prehistory of Easter Island, which is taught by our Dean, Dr. Terry Hunt. Our Assistant Dean, Dr. Karna Walter, teaches a class on human trafficking. There's a course called My Digital DNA, which is taught by a management information systems professor. We even have a course on uh, cyborgs and transhumanism, 
a class on storytelling, a class on Tucson place and context. So these are more niche classes, but again, they're only with other honors peers. Our classes are intended to be intellectually stimulating. So we want you to be in a classroom environment where you're participating and using critical thinking skills. These classes aren't necessarily more homework and more reading, but we want students to dig deeper into the course material. We also have something that's called an honors contract. If you're taking a non-honors course, but you would like to receive honors credit for it, you can create an agreement with your professor outlining what you're going to do in that class to earn honors credit. We also allow our students to take graduate level courses starting in their junior year. When you're transitioning from high school to college, we want to make sure that you have a smooth uh, and seamless process. And so the first year experience is intended to provide you with a solid foundation. We have several components that make up the first year. First is our common reading. The common reading program is something that you might find at a private school or a liberal arts school, and we've had this program for over a decade now. Each year, current honors students and faculty select a text for the incoming freshman class. So the fall 2019 freshman class read the book, What the Eyes Don't See by Dr. Mona Hanna Atisha. This unifies our freshman class and students receive this book at their summer orientation. You're expected to read the book before your first day of school and you'll want to be prepared because there are themes from the text that connect back to some of your honors freshman courses. What I also like about common reading is that the author comes to our university each year during family weekend. So Dr. Hana Atisha presented to over 700 of our freshmen and their parents at the Honors Village, and we even had a select group of students that were able to have dinner with her. And so this is where you get to hear from the author firsthand. Some years the text is fiction, others it's nonfiction, but there is a way that current honor students can help participate in choosing the book for the next class. Catalyst is a course for all of our incoming freshmen. It meets for the first seven weeks of school and it's one unit, and it's taught by our honors interdisciplinary faculty. This course focuses on cohort building, and we want students to learn how to think interdisciplinarily. For example, if you're a student in the College of Science, maybe you're on the pre-med track, we still want you to learn how to think through a humanities lens, how to think through a social sciences lens, looking at public health and medical ethics and not just the hard sciences. So this course teaches students all about critical thinking and all of the sections of Catalyst take place in the Honors Village. Another requirement in the first year is the first year seminar. This is a one credit class that takes place in the spring, and you can kind of think of it as a Socratic discussion. There are over 50 subjects to choose from, and again, these classes are less than 30 students. Another component of our first year is our mentorship program called PATH. This is something you can opt in for at your summer orientation. We have several PATH mentors who are sophomores, juniors, and seniors who've gone through a rigorous training to interact with their incoming freshmen and their mentees. If you're looking to have that peer-to-peer -peer connection, I strongly recommend PATH Mentors. This is where you might be partnered with someone from your home state, or maybe someone with a similar major, or you share extracurricular interests. This person can help you craft a study plan. They might tell you where the best hikes are in Tucson or where their favorite restaurants are to eat at. So this is completely optional, but I, it's something I recommend because not only will you have resources like our advisors and honors, but we want you to have a connection with some of our current honor students. Also in the first year, we have an optional research project. This takes place in the spring semester and it is credit bearing. You will get to pick whatever research topic you want and you'll be partnered with a professor to act as your mentor. Sometimes students pick research topics relevant to their majors, other times they don't. So it's completely up to you. For example, I once had a student who was tracking Gila monsters in the Catalina Mountains in Tucson. I once had a student who majored in philosophy, but did his research on the chemical breakdown of ice cream. I had a student who was curious about why young children can pick up on foreign languages more quickly than adults. At the end of your freshman year, we do have a showcase where you get to present your research. It's important to us that you're able to articulate your research, and hopefully this is something that you're passionate about, and we even have scholarship awards you can compete in. So that's one research component of our freshman year. 
We also have an optional study abroad. The first year trip takes place after your freshman year, and each trip is about four weeks long. What I like about this trip is that you travel with Arizona professors, with Arizona honors students, and you're earning honors credit abroad. Last year, for example, one of our trips traveled to London and Paris. So if you're looking for a shorter trip versus an entire semester, this is an excellent option. And it's one of the only study abroad programs on campus for freshmen. In the Honors College, we want to create global citizens. So what better way to do that than to immerse yourself in another culture? There are also additional study abroad programs that we offer, but this one's particularly for our first year students. There are numerous benefits when you're a part of the Honors College, and I discussed a few of these earlier. Um, for example, related to academics, our students also have priority registration. That means you get to register before your courses, before your non-Honors peers. This is advantageous because you get to craft your schedule that works best for you. So let's say you are a morning person, maybe you'll knock out all of your classes between 8 a.m. and noon. Um, or if you want to block your schedule where you have an on-campus job, um, maybe you'll only look for classes that are offered on Monday, Monday Wednesday, Fridays. So you do get to register before non-honor students. The Honors College is also home to additional scholarships and grants. One helpful website is Scholarship Universe. I will talk a little bit more about scholarships at the end of the presentation, but just know that we have scholarships for current honors students, and these can help go toward items like study abroad, internships, research, the dorms. So definitely take advantage of those and apply through Universe. I mentioned the Honors College does have specific advisors who serve students. These advisors can help with academics, They'd also, they also might connect you to other campus resources. So definitely take advantage of using your honors advisor to discuss your four-year plan, graduation requirements, internships, for example, or how to get connected with faculty on campus. The Honors College is also home to internships. We have an internship coordinator who works with local businesses and nonprofit organizations, as well as U of A campus partners to create internships for our students that are credit bearing. These act as professional development and they'll show up on your Arizona transcript. One more thing I'll mention is the Office of Nationally Competitive Scholarships. This is a helpful resource if you're applying for a prestigious award like the Fulbright, for example. We do have resources in-house who help students with the application and interview processes. Um, the U of A has a strong track record in Fulbright scholars. We recently had a Rhodes Scholar, Churchill Scholars. So these are scholarships you wouldn't be applying for right now, but maybe later on in your undergraduate career. Another benefit, of course, is the Honors Village. This is one of the only um, Honors programs in the country that has a truly residential experience. The Honors Village was constructed and completed in August 2019. So it's a brand new space and it's home to over 1,000 students, about 1,056. The Honors Village is not required, nor is it guaranteed. However, it's highly recommended. This is the first dorm at Arizona to have a dining hall. We have seven classrooms. And then we have over 30 honors faculty and staff who work in this building. It's also next door to our brand new rec and wellness center, which is open to all students on campus. In that rec center, there is also CAPS, which is counseling and psychological services. So there are also mental health resources there. The Honors Village, though, is a close-knit community. We want you to be able to make friends with students of all different majors and backgrounds. And we're located in the North District. So it's still a part of main campus. The North District also includes this new rec center. We're near the Health Sciences Complex, which is where you can find our College of Medicine, College of Public Health, College of Nursing, College of Pharmacy. We're across the street from the Eller College of Management, which is our business school. We're also near the College of Architecture, College of Fine Arts, Aerospace and Mechanical Engineering, as well as the College of Law. Everything is still walking distance on campus, but there are also Catran stops, which is a free campus shuttle right near the Honors Village. Many of our students bike, longboard, and some of our students do have their cars and there is an Honors Village parking garage. Keep in mind, if you live in the Honors Village, you are required to purchase an Honors meal plan. Those meal plans are based on the number of meals you would eat per week, and it's a swipe plan. To learn more, visit our Student Union's website to see the different options. 
Moving forward, we have several graduation requirements for students. The first is a 3.4 cumulative GPA. It's also a GPA that you'll need to maintain throughout your four years. The second is that you complete 30 honors units. This equates to about one quarter of your bachelor's degree. Keep in mind, it's not on top of your bachelor's degree, but it's embedded. If you're majoring in the College of Engineering, that 30 is actually 23. So you have a slight reduction there. The third requirement is your senior thesis, otherwise known as a capstone. This is a personalized research project that you will create, and it culminates what you've been learning throughout your undergraduate career. It's worth six honors units, and you'll also have a professor who serves as your mentor. The thesis will look very different from student to student depending on what they're studying. For example, if you're majoring in computer science, you might be doing research on software security and malware. An English major might be doing a compilation of short stories. A student in the College of Fine Arts might be composing or choreographing, performing, or putting together a portfolio. If you're majoring in physiology, you might be studying congenital heart defects. If you're majoring in neuroscience, perhaps you're studying neuropathic pain in rats. If you're majoring in entrepreneurship through the business school, you are creating a startup from ideation until launch with a team. Students in the College of Engineering do a senior design project, and that double dips. Teams are often sponsored by industry companies like Raytheon and Honeywell or Ventana Medical Systems or Roche, for example. When my brother was a part of the Honors College, he and his teammates made an unpowered exoskeleton for a U of A student with cerebral palsy who had limited mobility. They used their biomedical engineering skills, mechanical and material science to construct his apparatus, and that student was able to use his EXO when he graduated from the Eller College. As you can see, these theses projects vary. It's a rewarding project, and it's something that our students can discuss in an interview with an employer or for graduate programs. You'll notice that over 50% of honors graduates go straight into master's and PhD programs. About 10% of our students go to law school, excuse me, medical school, and about 3% go to law school. So over two thirds of honors grads are pursuing advanced degrees. And these students are getting into top programs across the country. If you're interested in medical school, we have a new partnership called MedCat. This is with our College of Medicine, Tucson. The University of Arizona also has a medical school in downtown Phoenix, but for now MedCat is with our Tucson location. 10 honors juniors will be guaranteed early admission into our medical school. They'll have to have certain GPA and MCAT requirements as well as prerequisites. To learn more, I recommend going to the honors website to see what your eligibility is, but this program is great if you're looking to apply to medical school and have assured admission. Usually medical school at Arizona is highly competitive and their cohort has anywhere between 100 to 120 students and 10% of those students would be coming directly from the Honors College. We're excited for this new partnership and it's in its pilot year. In the future, we're also working with our new veterinary program and we'll have a vet cap program. In terms of the Honors College application, we have several requirements. Students first apply to Arizona and then the Honors College. We ask for an essay, a resume, and a letter of recommendation. All of our applications are reviewed holistically. If you are a freshman, sophomore, or junior in the Honors College, the dates for fall 2021 will be different, but they should be similar in terms of the time frame. If you are a senior in high school, both of our deadlines have passed. However, we have another form of admission called self-nomination. This is where you can join the Honors College after your freshman year, completing a certain number of Arizona units and having a certain U of A GPA. More of that can be found on our website as well. When we evaluate students, it's a holistic review. Not only do we want to evaluate your academic metrics, but also we're looking at your leadership and your involvement and that letter of recommendation as well as your writing. National scholars are directly admitted into the Honors College. Those are students who are National Merit Scholars, so National Merit Semifinalists, Finalists, as well as National Hispanic Scholars. You can bypass the Honors application. Here's some information on our fall 2019 class. The average GPA was a 3.89 unweighted, our average SAT was about a 14.23, and our average ACT was a 31 composite. Keep in mind though, we don't have minimums to apply to the Honors College, and we admit students of all ranges. 
We also consider course rigor. So the number of honors, AP, dual enrollment, or IB classes that you've taken throughout high school. Almost half of our students identify as ethnically diverse. You'll see nearly 20% of our students are first generation college students. We're about 66% in-state, 34% out-of-state, and about 57% female, 43% male. Our fall 2019 freshman class was just over 1,100 students. We typically aim for a class size of about 1,000. I also like to illustrate the merit-based scholarships you can receive from Arizona. This matrix represents in-state scholarships. You can also find the same matrix online at financialaid.arizona.edu for out-of-state students. You can still submit test scores up until June. I like to show this because you'll notice that you can incrementally increase your scholarship based on a higher test score. So if you're planning on retaking the ACT or SAT, definitely send those scores in to be automatically reconsidered. Lastly, this is my contact information. If you have any further questions, please email me or contact us through our social media pages, and we look forward to seeing you this fall. Thank you so much.